Hey all, Bam Wolf here, and we've got big news in the world of Frost Giant and Stormgate on Tuesday, May 23rd. So about a week ago, Frost Giant invited over 100 creators, uh, casters and players and others, uh, to go to an online summit over the future of Stormgate, or, or at least the next year or so. We've got a sneak preview of the gameplay footage that'll be showing on June 11th, 4 p.m. Eastern on the PC Gaming Show. That's that Sunday, two weeks from now. I I'll be co-streaming it on twitch.tv slash Beowulf, and the link is certainly down in the bio down below. And man, I'm actually so excited about it. I we've seen this gameplay, right? That was at the summit last week. And it's short, but uh, it's got a bunch of really cool ideas. And actually some things in this video that I can't talk about yet. Uh, that will get revealed on that June 11th. So I can't talk about everything and certainly no spoilers for that gameplay that is, is going to be released. But what I can do is go over the screenshots that they dumped into my lap because after the summit, they sent us this massive package of I think it was like 11 screenshots and then some concept art and uh, something that they're calling like a theme of show or look of show piece of concept art pieces. And well, we're going to be going over the screenshots today. We're going to be going over the gameplay or the in-game stuff today. And then tomorrow all about the art, all about the lore that we'll be able to get into a little bit more. And uh, hey, I'm excited about it because the lore is awesome, but we have in-game screenshots and that is just by far the most exciting thing. So if you're still with me, and I hope you are, let's get into it. At that summit, we were treated to some insight into a couple units, not, not all of them, about four units of the human faction uh, that they'll be able to use in Stormgate. We also got to see some Infernal units, but that's going to be under wraps for quite a while. They don't have those built out yet. They're just ideas. From the Human Faction, we got to take a look at four. They were the Ebac, uh, the Lancer, the Vulcan, and the Atlas. Uh, we can talk about the first three here. The Atlas is uh, kind of a key reveal of the PC gaming show, so exactly what it can do. So you'll have to take a look then. We'll touch on it, but uh, again... We're going to talk about these first three. I should also point out that this information represents a snapshot in time. The game doesn't enter pre-alpha until July, even if we're kind of chomping at the bit to, a bit to get into it. And anything and everything will likely be very different, maybe even significantly so, by a release or uh, any of the beta periods by the time you all maybe get your hands and get to start playing the game. So just, just keep that in mind. If something seems inherently broken or you don't like the design, these things can absolutely change. But now with that being said, let's talk about these new units. As we get into the human units, we should talk about first about the overarching design of the human faction. Because, uh, the humans are a decently technologically advanced uh, faction, but they've spent a lot of their time developing uh, solutions to a hot house, earth, hot house earth or a climate change pre this infernal invasion, all, all these storm gates. In fact, the Sigma-6, the, uh, the Sigma program is what they're using to solve... Uh, climate change and things like that to kind of keep make Earth livable. Sigma-6 was a last-ditch effort uh, where they said, you know, may maybe make a wormhole. <laughs> maybe uh, we can't save Earth, so we need to build a wormhole and, and go to a different dimension or another planet or something like that. And uh, unfortunately, they brought the other planet to them and it caused an invasion. But what this means is that a lot of units will be repurposed from helping support our industrial roles, things to make things or, you know, perform agricultural services or things like that. Uh, this will then, uh, per Frost Giant, per what they told us in the summit, manifest itself with a lot of uh, healing units and support units. Units that are really focused on synergies, on working together, on allowing uh, more power in, in the sum of it par its parts than any individual unit. But with that being said, uh, we'll dive this next segment into the known and the unknown. At the summit, Frost Giant gave us a full breakdown of four units. Again, this Lancer, this Vulcan, this Evac, and this Atlas. But that being said, they did give us another unit that is called the Skyrider uh, that we will be getting into as well. I don't know much about that. That's why we're breaking this up. Uh, because I like speculation. And honestly, it's new. So let's get started with the known. Every faction in an RTS needs a solid Tier 1 unit. And the Tier 1 melee unit... Now, there may be a... Actually, we know that there is a ranged unit. We've seen in some of the screenshots there is a some sort of gunner type thing, some sort of marine, I guess, equivalent. We don't know how it's going to work, but we know it's going to be there. But we know that the Tier 1 melee unit is this unit that is called the Lancer. Uh, it's a bulky suit of power armor. Uh, maybe we don't know what it was before, you know, that part of the Sigma program. And it's got an absolutely massive lance. Uh, this lance allows them to have a further reach then you might uh, the, another another melee unit will. And that means that they can probably get the first shot off. They can get the last shot off. They're going to be really powerful at holding high ground early game, I would assume, because again, you just 
data or a fog of a war plus longer reach that's just a good thing and it should give them an advantage just in general uh in these early skirmishes that skirmishes that we can expect uh is again they're gonna get that all important uh first hit or last hit they're also apparently according to frost giant incredibly tanky against uh high amounts of damage the best comparison of this is going to be what we saw in wings of liberty or heart of the swarm with the immortal where the immortal uh at that point their hardened barrier meant that they could never take more than i think was 40 damage from any source so marines were really good against them they would do a lot of low um low individual damage but a lot of it over time high dps but immortals would not do much and uh, not take much damage at all from things like thors or siege tanks or things that were high damage per instance but low uh low impact rate so that is going to theoretically allow them to have more utility into the mid game and the other fun thing about these units, and I'm really excited to see how this is going to work, is that supposedly they're going to be able to deflect projectiles with their lance. So, we, you know, this is a little bit of kind of an immortal type idea, uh, but also kind of some sort of Eastern martial arts. We're going to run into the enemy and we're going to have a staff twirling so we, we deflect projectiles, which in general should just make them even tankier, which again provides utility in that mid game. These, these melee units that run forward, that deflect projectile shots that don't take a ton of damage from high impact damage from like siege units, for example, means that they should be able to make contact with uh, an army, even into the mid game, into the late game, which is going to be interesting to see how that one works. Uh, conceptually, having two ways to mitigate damage like this seems like a, it's a little broken, especially with kind of the enhanced melee range that they have. But uh, I'm willing to give Frost Shine the benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt, and I'm excited to see how these things are going to play. Uh, I am definitely not going to lance rush my opponents to death uh for the first couple games uh but in the air though the, these humans or the human faction will be able to deploy these lancers through something that frost shine is called the evac it's not the medevac and apparently it is the earliest uh air unit that any faction will have access to and importantly here it is strictly a dropship uh no healing it's not going to warp something in it's not going to provide detection it's not going to do anything like that it's not going to have power structures it just picks units up from somewhere and drops them somewhere else, which is such a nice thing from just a simplification of role perspective. One of the reasons that war prisms are so strong in StarCraft or the medevacs are so strong is that they do multiple things. You know, you need them to give mobility, but if they heal or they allow you to add warp, uh, add more units into the fight, that is a conceptually kind of a broken thing that has to be kind of designed around. But these are just, these are just units that, you know, say, hi, Lancers, you're here. And you're going to go over here or high workers or high other units that we're going to talk about in a second we're going to move you somewhere else very simple very, very to the point and that makes sense because again it is an early game dropship unit uh, it does have one fun interaction with another unit uh but we're gonna have to wait for july 11th to go into that so uh sit tight you know buckle your seat belts or buckle your seat belts because it's fun but uh, we can't talk about it just now but as we move on from the early game, uh, Tier 1.5, moving on to Tier 2, we get to talk about this thing called the Vulcan. Now, this one's been around for a while. Uh, the image of it is uh, on screen. The image actually that we have here was from the PC Gamer cover piece back in December. Um, but what we do now have is A, a name for a unit, it's the Vulcan, and B, some information on how it actually works. So if you remember the interview I did with Neuro, what, two months ago, three months ago, something like that. Actually, it's like closer to four months ago at this point. Anyways, the interview I did with Nura at the start of the year, uh, at one point he talked about a unit that increased its damage output the longer it was just sitting there and firing. Uh, and he was talking about this Vulcan. Uh, this Vulcan is a bigger mech, which means only two of them fit in an EVAC instead of, uh, I, I assume, a forward lances or four uh, worker units, something like that. But what it does have, it has this big gun. I mean, you can see it. It has this big gun that starts to spin up. And it fires damage in a cone in front of it. And the longer it fires, the faster the gun spins, the more damage it does over time which gives you a really solid kind of defensive emplacement. But the thing is, if that's happening, well, you don't want it to move. And if you do want it to move, you want it to move as quick as possible so you can reposition, so you can start firing firing again. Because I'm going to assume that uh, the Vulcan moving means it's not firing, and therefore, you know, it's not spinning up, and therefore it loses fire rate. So uh, the, the good folks at Frost Giant have decided that if something wants to get somewhere faster, you give it a jetpack. Now... That means these Vulcans, these are going to have jetpacks. Uh, they're not leaping. I don't think they leap up and over, not from what I saw, but they do dash forward or backwards or side to side. So you want to get a better angle. You can dash. You want to move forward. You can dash. You want to move backwards. You can dash. And the fun thing is, is if you dash in any unit that you go through, at least any enemy unit you go through, if you dash through them, they're stunned briefly. So uh, you have this ability to reposition, to get better concaves, to get better angles. And if you just want to 
take a big fight. You can dash right on through the enemy, which is going to give uh, between the charge up that we need to see and the this ability to dash forward and stun things and get better concaves. Uh, we're going to have some really fun micro, I think, coming out of these. And that's exciting. I mean, the, it's not often that we get fun micro from stationary units because that's kind of what inherently these units are. But I think we're going to see some. We might start to see some things interesting. Now, those of you that are familiar with the history of StarCraft are going to say, well, that's just the Void Ray from like Wings of Liberty. Well, yeah, yes, it is. It's it's a unit that does more damage the faster it, or the longer it's firing. But hey, this is on the ground. B, it's a cone. And C, you know, you, you can go full linebacker on it. So yeah, the charge up mechanic is not new, but uh, it is certainly a different approach. Uh, the dash also, by the way, does something extra on top of just uh, stunning units. But to figure out what that one is, uh, June 11th. PC Gamer Show. Again, it, that's a reveal that Rush Giant's holding on to for the moment. But uh, I can't wait to talk about it. A, during then, and then uh, after the reveal. Because it's pretty sick. I'm very excited. And then, finally, on these units that we know a lot about, uh, that that uh, Frost Giant did reveal to us, we can talk about the Atlas. I just want to do it and give it its, its due here, because I think the design is fantastic. I'm really excited about it. Uh, but anything in particular is, again, we're going to have to wait until June 11th uh, to more. I just think it's neat. Honestly, I think it's really pretty. Uh, so I just wanted to have an opportunity to put its concept art up on screen. But as, even as Frost Giant gave us the rundown of these four units, exactly what they're going to do, I, I, honestly, as well as some uh, Infernal units that will be coming in the next couple months or so. I'm not sure when that reveal is going to be. And you know what? At le these units are exciting. Ah, dashy, AOE, splashy boy, and, and uh, Lancers and Evacs and things. But they have some designs of their Infernal units that I am so... They're so cool. I can't talk about it. I really want to. But... They got some really cool stuff that the Infernals are gonna have, and uh, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a video about it, of course. But suffice to say, there's some stuff I've never seen in an in, in an RTS before, or uh, interesting takes on some tropes, and they're very exciting. Uh, that being said, though, again, moving back to the human resistance because that is what this video is about. That's what the the, the footage we have uh, as a special treat. Frost Giant also in this package they gave us these four units, right, that we have seen. And then one that we haven't. They, they, they gave us no context. They just, there's an image in the folder called a Skyrider in the asset pack. Now, uh, this is a unit that we, again, we don't know anything about. So everything I say is going to be uh, informed. I hope it's informed at least conjecture. Uh, it's, it's guesstimation. I talked earlier about how the human faction will contain a decent amount of healing and support units. And it seems like of all the things that they've given us, this is the first unit of that paradigm that we've been able to see. Uh, Visually, it's a green science vessel, likely powered by maybe a shrunken storm gate or the anima that we know the infernals are looking for. It, it doesn't look like a terrestrial energy source. And we can see that kind of that swirling energy in the middle that kind of looks like the in, inside of the storm gate from the promo that we saw. Uh, granted, it's green instead of red, but, you know, these things can change. Maybe different power source. I'm not sure. And also, we can see a little energy bar uh, at the top of it. It seems like it will be reliant on energy to cast some spell. Uh, the fact that it is a green unit makes me think it's likely that it's going to heal that, or I don't know, maybe it poisons or something, and it goes full on uh, Science Vessel and has like an irradiant type ability. Now, I don't know how I feel about this, because Frost Giant in the past has been criticized for its art direction. I mean, look at the trailer mech. Uh, it, the, the, the mech in the trailer just looks almost exactly like Diva's mech from Overwatch, uh, but this seems like the biggest misstep to me. I mean, we're gonna, I have it on screen right now. You can see the Skyrider and you can see the Science Vessel side by side. And not only are they visually, oh my, they may be different in scale, but they're visually very similar. They appear to fill the same role, a, a, support, a support floating sphere in the sky that is a spellcaster that does support things. And as much as I fa a fan I am, as much as I'm a fan of what Frost Giant is doing, some of Frost Giant's and Stormgate's biggest critics have been saying, I don't like the art. It's derivative. It's not there. It's, it's just Blizzard 2.0. And while... This is that. I mean, this is a <laughs> this is a science vessel. You can't tell me other. Maybe it's going to do things a little differently, but it is so obviously the exact same design language that uh, this this is just such a this is a criticism on a silver platter for what Frost Giant is doing. I I I would love to see if some maybe there is going to be something new about this. Maybe it's just the still that makes this look wrong, but this looks like, it's almost identical to the to thing to the science vessel or maybe the mother mothership core but really that science vessel and human human faction support spellcaster floating ball with outside ball it's almost identical 
So as excited I am, I'm not a big fan. Uh, hopefully this is going to get, we're going to maybe get new iterations on this, but yeah, this is, uh, this is very repetitive and not kind of the innovation that we, we've come to expect out of Rush Giant or that I've come to hope to expect out of Rush Giant a little bit. But on that down note, even as the ideas are maybe interesting, uh, let's move on to structures because we've got four new production structures as well as uh, some context about that structure that showed up in some of the previous screenshots and uh, a new mining structure as well. So at the time, my guess uh, that that massive screenshot was that the structures we saw, the two of them were some sort of resource building. But apparently this habitat, as they're calling it, is just the human version of the supply depot or the overlord. It's a supply structure. thing though is that these seem rather large and that means it might be hard to fit them in bases uh which means that maybe you need more map maybe the driver to expand is not okay well I need more money I mean that's certainly always going to be a driver but I need more space I need to build more supply structures so I can continue to build my army which is actually a really interesting idea if you think about it that's uh kind of space capping your main base is not something that we've seen uh, explored all that much. I mean, sometimes we'll see a bigger base versus a smaller base, but there's almost always room to, you know, have your supply structures so you can expand. We also know that Frost Giant is interested in exploring buildings that are more than just a supply depot. Uh, something that it does, supply depot provides supply plus something else. So I wonder what purpose these habitats will serve. Is it research after all? Is it going to be some, is it going to build workers? I, I don't know. Uh, what do you think though? Um, let me know. We got the comments section here. You should let me know in the comments down below. I, I'm actually really curious uh, what your what your thoughts are going to be, what your conjecture is. Uh, we also have something that uh, Frost Giant is calling the Therium Refinery. And I'm going to assume that this Therium is going to be uh, used as the second resource. Uh, it, if you look at the top of the building, it seems like it's designed to be dumped into rather than uh, extracted out from. We would expect maybe there to be an opening at the bottom if it was going to be extracted out from like the Terran refinery, but instead it, it seems like a big bulking mining machine where you take a bunch of raw material and you dump it into it. And these big grind, uh, grinding gears will process it down into something that is useful. And what that means is that if that's where it gets deposited instead of a town hall, or maybe on top of a town hall, you can do both. That means that you can maybe mine further afield. Uh, one of the, the kind of core RTS ideas for at least in Starcraft has always been, well, you need to have a base where you're mining from. And if you don't have a base, you're going to be long distance mining. It's very inefficient. It really doesn't work out super well. But what if instead of that, you could proxy your therium reactor? You could uh, put four, four workers in an early evac and drop it in the corner of the map where there is maybe there's a therium deposit in whatever shape that takes. I don't know. And then you just proxy a therium refinery there. And now, uh, obviously, this depends on efficiency, on whether this is worth it based on how ethereum capped uh build orders will be how uh, how how much that is going to have to drive uh, expansion but if you say you're playing i don't know the, the the human version of mech and you need a lot of you need a lot of therium and you don't need a lot of whatever the first mineral is well maybe you you can just proxy your your therium re uh, reactors in the corner of the map with a with an evac and then not expand too quickly and, and play a little bit more defensively i don't know that, that's an interesting idea that was kind of this idea that was percolating around my head when uh, Frost Giant was talking about how things were going to work in the summit. Like, ah, early evac. Interesting second uh, interesting second resource. This could be fun. Now, there's a lot more to this second resource. Uh, again, all we have is the name right now. There's going to be a lot more to this second resource in the PC gaming show. So again, you know, I, I'm just saying it. But uh, be on the lookout for that one. Because uh, this second resource is, it's interesting. It's not, it's not like anything we've seen in StarCraft, that's for sure. And... Not like anything in a Blizzard-like RTS that, that I can think of. Uh, so that's going to be fun. But moving on to the production structures, we have four. We have a barracks, a machine factory, a biokinetics lab, whatever that is, and a mech bay. Uh, the first two of these are self-evident. Uh, we can assume that a mech bay will produce mechs. I mean, duh. And the barracks will produce infantry, lancers, and gunners, and things like that. What we don't know, though, is what this biokinetics lab and the machine shop will do. Uh, my assumption is that they're upgrade structures. Uh, machine shop is where you go if you want to get something upgraded on your car or you get your bike fixed or you add something to a tank. And the fact that we have ammunition kind of scattered around this building maybe makes that make sense. Or maybe there are some structures, some units that, ha that have ammunition that need to go back to a machine shop to get that ammunition. So, like, really... 
kind of like a nuke idea, maybe, but maybe with uh, less late game and maybe you produce more of them. Because again, those bundles of structure, or those bundles of uh, of ammo, of missiles, or of bullets, or whatever they are, are you know they're, they're more sizable than we would expect out of a nuke. And of course, the biokinetics lab is a place where research is done into how living things move. Uh, in the context of Stormgate, it seems likely that these will harbor upgrades for the mechanical and biological units, respectively. Um, but I think we might have several different upgrade structures in the game, actually. So the biokinetics lab, based on the name, would be specifically for upgrades that improve how your bio units will be able to interact with the map. Things like uh, Zealot Legs in StarCraft or Stim, uh, things that change how you, maybe a, a, a leaping upgrade or a boost. I, I don't know. But things that allow you to move in different ways. Move faster, jump up, dash, whatever that is. But I wouldn't necessarily expect it to include baseline armor and attack upgrades because I, I mean, by armor, well, maybe, maybe, maybe armor, right? Because uh, you, you develop the biokinetics, so the armor is easy to move in. But attack upgrades don't really make a lot of sense to me. Um, I would expect that to maybe be a second structure, maybe even the habitat. I don't know. But finally, uh, we've got a screenshot, just a zoomed in picture for the map of what they're calling the hinterlands terrain. Uh, which is the main forest biome that we've seen in other screenshots and other art thus far. And I, I do want to take a moment to point out that there are four levels in this screenshot. Uh, StarCraft has recently started experimenting with that four or five level idea back in the last year or so. But that is something that has not really been part of Blizzard RTSs for quite a while now. So seeing this added in is going to be really interesting. Uh, in StarCraft, we're seeing it not produce the best maps yet. But of course, new game, new ideas. We'll see how that happens. Um, for more coverage, by the way, of the different terrain types that they are introducing, I got a video coming out tomorrow uh, on all the concept art that's been released that they sent out to us. And that includes uh, a couple shots of a new terrain. And then we, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the third terrain that they've kind of hinted at, but we haven't seen yet. And then I do have one final thing. This is a chicken. The file name uh, mentions that it is a profile portrait. Uh, is this confirmation of uh, the chickens, uh, space chickens, maybe, as a third faction? I mean, in uh, in Zelda games, chickens are by far your your most evil adversary. In in, in uh, Elder Scrolls, you know, you kill a chicken, the entire town goes after you. So it makes sense. The great villain, the great thing that unites the Infernals and the humans together is demon chickens from space. <laughs> I don't think that's likely, but that is one Imperial chicken staring down at us. But that is all the new screenshots. That's all the new in-game stuff. There's going to be a video up tomorrow again on the concept art that Frost Giant released. And uh, as a reminder, I will be co-streaming the PC Gaming Show and Stormgate's gameplay reveal on Sunday, June 11th at 4 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash So make sure to tune in for that. And if you want more Stormgate content, make sure to subscribe. I've got an interview coming up next week, next two weeks with the people working on Frost Giant's server infrastructure. They're called Hathor. They're doing some really cool stuff. I'm very excited about it. So on top of that, if you have any questions about how that's going to work, this decentralized server ecosystem, make sure to drop that in the comments down below. And I'll maybe I'll do my best to ask them those questions uh, when I have that interview on Wednesday. So thank you so much for watching and I'll uh, catch you next time.